Okay, hello everybody and welcome to uh, Between Two Teachers. And uh, this is our Friday, November 19th uh, episode here, uh, bringing you news about uh, education all over. So uh, my name is Consuelo Lara. And I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And as always, I'm going to read our uh, sacred land acknowledgement. We pause to acknowledge that we have gathered on the ancestral territory of Huqing, part of the unceded land of the Chochenyo and Karkin speaking Muwekma Ohlone people. We remember the, their continued co connection to this region and give thanks to them for allowing us to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homeland. We offer our respect to their elders and all Ohlone people of the past and present, which is particularly appropriate this week, which is our last uh, meeting with you before Thanksgiving next, uh, next Thursday. Um, so uh, what's going on in education? I, I was just uh, reading this morning, the newest thing that's happened in Nash internationally is the, uh, uh, Austria in, uh, in, in the EU has announced that as of uh, Monday, they're gonna go into a total lockdown because uh, once again, their intensive uh, care wards are completely full. And uh, so, and they had tried to do a lockdown for unvaccinated folks, but uh, that was not uh, successful. So they're gonna instead have a complete lockdown. But I bring this up in particular because of how they describe a complete lockdown. And in Austria, a complete lockdown is everybody works from home, everybody stays home, except in-person school remains open. Very different from the American, uh, certainly the California approach, but that's, what, that's what's happening in Austria. We'll see, but the one big thing is they are going to vaccinate. They're just not even talking about exemptions. They're vaccinating their entire country because they have come to the conclusion that whatever their vaccination rate is now, it needs to be 100%. They don't have a choice. Well, okay. No, they don't have a choice. They're they're moving ahead. All right. Um, na nationally, the most interesting story that I wanted to talk about were, uh, was Kevin McCarthy, uh, the uh, uh, in the House of Representatives, who uh, gave an eight and a half hour speech last night. So he's uh, probably sleeping right now. But Kevin McCarthy also introduced the um, Parents' Bill of Rights. And essentially, it, the Bill of Rights is so that your children do not learn about the uh, history of slavery in the United States. That's the main thing that we're trying to do. Uh, it's, it's to, uh, they, they call his quote is, you have a right to know what's being taught in school. And so they want parents to have the opportunity to um, um, oversee, basically to oversee curriculum. And just as in the past, we would pull our children out if they were um, getting sex education and you didn't want them to have sex education. It's that same concept, but it's about history. Wow, wow. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and that, that that's in Congress. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, anyway, and that's what they're running on, right? <laughs> and they're, yeah. And they're, he spoke out against so many just basic human rights that we have and that we need. He really did. It's just terrible. But I didn't know that part. That's 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 not good. That is where they are. So the concept, what what's happening there? The result of that is different uh, organizations, political organizations, are are uh, are very aware of this. It's very public. It's not like this is a secret. Um, and they're looking at ways to support school board members and teachers uh, who, and allow them to have, to allow them to be able to teach the truth, to actually teach our history instead of this, uh, this whitewashed version of history, which is really what they're trying to portray. Uh, oh. It's a big issue and it's not, it's not going away. It's, yeah. It is really ener energizing everyone. Yeah. This is one of the issues that came up. They are all conflated. I watched a, um, a rally in Sacramento this, I guess it was Monday. And uh, 
the, the speakers at that rally did the same thing. They brought together, and, and they're really separate. The, if you, you, there are people who are very uh, anti-vaccine or very anti-mask, but curriculum and, and, and vaccine and mask are very different things but they've been brought together under this umbrella to, together with privatization, right? Together with school choice. All of those things are being um, put together in this, in this big soup, this stew. And what it is, is the demonization of the teachers union. Yes, yes, and anti-public schools, absolutely. You know, and that it's very clear at this at this event, and and I could see there would be there were some people who were really only there because they were afraid of the vaccine, mm -hmm. and there were some people and, and and their children, you know, really struggled with masking. And in in, in some districts where you're really going to where no, you're not going to be able to continue an in person school, their their children were you know so upset to be losing their their friends. It, it, it's a huge conflict for those parents. Yeah. And they're not even thinking about these other issues, but right. they're getting brought into it. So that's what's happening in that area. Um, as far as vac vaccination rates are going, the uh, uh, black teen vaccination rates, so the African-American community is um, much more hesitant to become vaccinated. And in West Contra Costa, we had a, a big meeting with the uh, local, uh, two local uh, African American doctors who've been major leaders in the community, to answer questions about the vaccine and and help people get past their hesitancy to take it. But it is a major struggle, and it continues to be um, uh, very difficult. People have very clear, uh, deeply held beliefs, and it's very hard to get everybody to move off of them. Uh, and it shows up in the numbers. And the consequences of that are people are going to have to make decisions. Districts that have decided that if you're not vaccinated, you cannot attend in person. Those decisions are, kind of, January is coming right up. I mean, this is the November, Thanksgiving's here. Then December is, is, is the whole holiday month. And then we're here. Yeah, yeah. No, we need this vaccination, and uh, I'm glad that they're going to have this mandate. I that's how you, I, you know, I can't believe there's people that are, have not been touched by this thing, have either gotten people seriously ill or passed away in their families, and and um, you don't realize how important it is to get vaccinated, especially in our schools, our children. Um, but um, one of the things the county has been doing is doing a lot of town halls with pediatricians. To people need the facts. That's what they need. They need the facts. And so we try to spread that out as much as possible. But the county is doing, uh, if you need information, that's where you can find a lot of it, uh, accurate information. So this is going to be a struggle. And we're going to have to prepare for parents, students who are going to say, nope, not come to school. Okay. Yeah, I mean, clearly they're operating off of different information. Yes, and this has been the whole thing, right? And and because the internet provides us with access to so much, so many different viewpoints. Um, the problem is that those viewpoints are presented as facts, and in, and we don't have a mechanism of somebody just. We don't have a mechanism to 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 really vet those facts. Many people don't, and that's that becomes the big problem. Yep. Um, Okay. So I wanted to do an update on uh, school closures because we talked about that last time. And the big update is, uh, is around Hayward because Hayward at one point was gonna close, I think they were gonna close eight schools. And this week they had a meeting with one uh, issue and that was the uh, adoption of this uh, school closure plan and they didn't adopt it in the end, they decided that it doesn't mean that ultimately they won't because they, they did say, look, we have to, what we have to do is, is get more um, information out to our communities. And the folks that were on, at these meetings, although they had ultimately presented some very clear graphics, which I talked about here, they did it in a, in a way that the community members who really were going to be affected had not been brought into the conversation. And 
one of the things about that was they had a committee and the committee uh, uh, really was a school closure committee, but it had a different name. And that committee, everybody walked off the committee when they found out what, what had happened and, and what the committee was being used for. So um, Dr. Wayne, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, uh, the superintendent, he had to uh, step back and, and they're gonna reassess and however they are gonna close two of the schools and then move forward with uh, conversations around the rest of them uh, going into the future. But that is a real victory, I think, for, uh, for the Hayward community who can at least feel that they were heard. It wasn't just a, a, a plan that got rubber stamped, even though it, uh, it was uh, certainly presented as, as a fait accompli in many ways by the superintendent. Uh, okay, then go ahead and tell us that the, the district, has, the county has been very busy. Oh yeah, the county has been very busy. I've been going to all kinds of meetings. So we're dealing with, uh, everybody's dealing with redistricting because of the census. Now we have to re, um, draw those lines. Rebuilding here in, the, in uh, area one is starting up, uh, had gone to some, um, workshops about uh, Lake School. And then there's reimagining, redistricting, reimagining, rebuilding. Yep. Uh, I'm going to reimagine high, uh, two high schools, Richmond High and Kennedy. And um, I'm really happy to hear that a lot of the things that they want in these buildings is high voltage for equipment and more CTE is what it sounds like. So I'm just really happy about that and want to continue going to those. Um, and um, yeah, so that's a big, a big, a real big thing. And also the other big thing is the vaccinations. By January 3rd, students, staff will all be required to be vaccinated. And in West Contra Costa. In West Contra Costa. Not the rest of Contra Costa County. No, not the county, not the county, just this district uh, has uh, voted for that, for that mandate. Right. So that's going to be, um, you know, there's going to have to be alternatives for staff, for faculty who decides not to, and for students. So I'm, you know, they're going to have to prepare for that. Because well, so they discussed it the other night at, at the West Contra Costa board meeting, and uh, they're going to, the number that was brought up was that I need 15 more teachers for uh, the virtual school. Okay. Because uh, one question that got asked is, so they have two schools in independent study. Uh, VISTA is what their independent study school was called. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to call them uh, VISTA Land and VISTA Virtual. They may call them the VISTA family of schools. So then you're, because if you are not vaccinated, um, Vista Land, which is the historic independent study program, uh, has uh, hubs. The teachers in that program historically would have students come once a week and, or you know, at some interval for, uh, for uh, an in-person meeting. And unvaccinated students are not eligible for in-person meetings. There you go. Yeah, so um, that's a big one. That's a big yeah, one. Yeah, that's a big one. And the other big thing is the redistricting. Uh, um, you know, everybody, the county, um, and also the county board of supervisors, the college district, the school districts. Um, who am I missing? Some cities, and you know, some cities all have to redraw these uh, these lines. And I guess something that really shocked me, but that people kind of accepted it as you know that whole phrase. This is the way we do things. Uh, is this, I heard this phrase, respect for incumbents. And what that meant was they drew these lines to accommodate the people who were in office. I mean, I just found that um, incredible, but- Which is the whole reason you're, you know, the number one thing you shouldn't do is that, right? That becomes, yes. you're looking for a community of interest and that, that community of interest is made up of one person. Yes, yes, and that's amazing. Who, yeah. I mean, that's the very definition of gerrymandering. Okay. Exactly. So we're not about that. And our, uh, the Board of Education uh, voted to um, hire a demographer, I guess that's. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. And so we're moving. We all agree that we're not uh, going to be part of that. Because what you have done is inherited a map that was drawn 10 years ago with the idea of respect for incumbents at its center. <laughs> Isn't that something? Anyway, yeah. it's a new day now. And so that I was really proud of my board for doing that. I think that's, that is such a, a, a good idea. I mean, honestly, I thought that one thing that counties could do that have uh, boards with similar numbers on them is have one set of lines. Right. So yes. that you're in the, all of the districts. So, so if there are five districts, if, if, there, if there are, if the county has a, a multiple agencies that have the same number of seats, why don't they have the same lines? Exactly. exactly. Why, what, what is the difference? I had a conversation with one uh, person and she said, oh, they have different communities of interest. Well, why is that? that they would have <laughs> communities of interest. The only one I can think of is, is, is the elected person. Yes, they, yeah. people live in different houses, but it's interesting. It's no. a very interesting issue, but, but, it, but it's a core part of our democracy. And so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what, what, what you come up with. I know, I know, I think it's gonna be great. So we're gonna be active in that. And I just have one other little bit of news and that is the possibility of two of our charter schools uh, combining uh, Invictus and Caliber. So somebody, I guess, leaked it. And then um, we were told, well, you know, it may, may not happen, but I thought, I thought it was an interesting concept, an interesting idea. It solves a lot of problems for both of them. They, they, yes. but they, that would mean they would only have one board, I would assume, yeah. mm -hmm. right? We're not talking about them co-locating. You're talking nope. about them merging. Merging. Right, and then they would be a K-12 school. There you go. And I was wondering about, uh, okay, which uh, CMO is gonna benefit from this? Is uh, I guess it would be Caliber, because I don't that, know. Is it, well, because, because Invictus is a standalone school. Yeah, so it's actually uh, uh, it's merging into Caliber, being absorbed by Caliber. Yeah, that's that. I, I mean, I could be completely wrong. It could so, be wrong. We don't know. Uh, if I we'll am, follow. We'll follow. let us know. But, uh, <laughs> but well, that's what, what it sounds like. Any, uh, anyway, that is anyway. that is a real interesting. Um, yeah, uh, interesting thing that's yeah. happening. Okay, well, I'm done. All right. Time for our, our, our shout outs. And I want two shout outs. Uh, the first one is to, in this week of where we are particularly uh, grateful, I am grateful to <laughs> Tracy Logan, who is the West Contra Costa technology officer, who made the decision to, as uh, she's refurbishing her equipment or the district's equipment, to have 12,000 computers that she had many choices of what she could do with but she donated them to an organization in Oakland called Tech Exchange, who will refurbish them and distribute them to community members who need them. That's 12,000 computers, right? That, and that's because the district, West Contra Costa, went one-to-one -one earlier than other districts, right? We took money from a bond measure. Uh, we were able to incorporate that and, and, and bring the district uh, online and make all the efforts to have a one-to-one -one district before COVID earlier than other districts, which means that we have the, we're turning them over uh, sooner than other districts are. So a big shout out to, uh, to Ms. Logan and the district for, for that donation to uh, uh, Tech Exchange. And the second one is um, around older adult education. Um, the older adult program in West Contra Costa has been told they will be able to continue on through the end of our school year, but there is no funding um, specifically after that. And adult education does not have a line item and adult education is um, itself fractured between um, older adults, uh, ESL students, CTE students, and then community ed students who pay for their own classes. Older adults need their own advocacy group because they're unique. And the truth is these are the most vulnerable of all of those groups. And, um, and they don't have that. So there is a movement now 
to start a group called Old, Older Adult Education Forever that would be similar to a PTA where families would come together and become and teachers and family members would come together and community members and support uh, having the state fund these older adult programs through adult education. And these are programs that were decimated in uh, uh, years ago. They, some of them exist in nursing homes, they exist in uh, community centers, they exist in senior centers. There, uh, there are many different ways that they are delivered, but they are critical to the lives of our, uh, many of our senior citizens and, uh, and then they need to be supported. So I will continue to report on this. I think that it's something that we can highlight here and really advocate for, because this is a group that could easily, it came incredibly close to being wiped out. Yeah, our the funding, is, the funding is, is very tiny compared to, uh, to the results. No, it's just terrible. And these um, uh, programs are so important. This is where our adults go for ESL classes. They go for citizenship uh, training and they go get their GED and then job training. I mean, this is like a survival level for many people in our community. So we support it 100% and we'll follow it. Yeah, absolutely. Adult education needs needs advocates and, and the, there's, they have their own organization, but we have to pull out the older adults because even within the adult education world, the older adults aren't, aren't lined up because they don't have the same outcomes. Right, the outcome for the for the classes for the eighty and ninety year olds is not the same as it is in the CTE classes, and uh, and and it shouldn't be. No. Yeah. Great. Right. So we have to honor that. So that is. I am very grateful to everybody in the older adult education community, and I'm so grateful that they're starting this, yes. and we will do everything we can to support them and and get them the sustainability they need, so that California doesn't just let this disappear. Absolutely. Great. And go. with that, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I think we'll skip next week. We'll skip and... next week, but we'll be back the week after. The week after. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>